Hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven back with another video for Fly Fisherman Magazine. This one's going to be on the Chubby Chernobyl and it'll be in the February-March issue of the magazine. This fly has become a western staple over the years, but we're going to elevate it just a bit and make it a little bit more durable, a little bit more buoyant, and a lot more fun to tie. We're also going to talk about the new hook from Umqua, the XT050, the stubby chubby hook that's a perfect chassis for a smaller version of this fly. Check it out. I hope you enjoy. All right, let's tie a full-size chubby Chernobyl. This is a really good indicator fly and it's a fly I fished with a fair bit over the last few summers um, but one of the things that's always bothered me about the sort of standard factory version um, is it just doesn't have much much panache to it um, so I've sort of dressed it up a little bit and just elevated this fly um, uh, by adding a few little pieces and just sort of dialing in the process so I'm going to show you how I how I go about tying my chubbies um, I'm going to start with the TMCO 5262. This is a two extra strong, two extra long nymph hook. And the reason I use this heavier hook is so that the fly always lands right side up. Um, I know you'll be wanting to, to tie a, a big dry like this on a light wire dry fly hook, but um, for two reasons. That heavier hook will help kill the fly so it always lands hook point down. Um, and it also um, holds up well to the heavy size tippet that you can fish these big flies on. So um, you don't want to tie a... Uh, uh, fine wire hook to zero X tip it and it just straightens out too easily so this heavier wire hook serves two purposes and I'm going to start in this case with some six aught unithread in tan and I'm just going to start this up behind the hook eye here and I'll dress the whole shank all the way back to the bend and I just want to make a smooth even thread base all the way back there and I do try to abut these wraps so that they are touching all the way back just so I've got a smooth base to tie the fly on. Now one of the things that's always bugged me about factory chubbies is they tend to come apart pretty easily. They come, come uh, loose on the hook, so they twist loose a little bit. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is add some dubbing here. So I'm going to put a little bit of dubbing down first. And I'm using uh, Nature Spirit Emergence dubbing uh, for the body on this fly, but any sort of coarse uh, shaggy dubbing will work fine here. I know a lot of uh, chubbies are tied with ice dub. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of ice dub for, for dry flies. It's just a little bit too porous. Um, but I'm going to take this coarser dubbing and I'm just going to dub a few inches of thread fairly tightly here. And I'm going to build a little band of dubbing back here at the bend. And I want a bit of a taper to it. And if you've got a little more than you need, it's not a not a big huge deal because you can work up the hook point up up the hook shank a little bit but I want to end with that thread hanging just about halfway between the the point on the hook and the point on the barb and at that point I'm gonna come in and put just a little shot of zappa gap down right on top of those thread wraps right on top of that dubbing and just saturate that through and what that'll do is when I go to tie my foam down, that'll hold that in place and keep that from turning on the hook. So I'm essentially gluing the fly together. Now the next thing I'm going to put on is, in the case of this big size 6, um, these are 3 millimeter fly foams. And uh, what I've done is stapled them together so that I've got the two pieces stacked together and I just cut those with a, a single edge razor blade and a metal straight edge so that I've got two strips that are the same width. And in this case I've got black and tan and again you know the colors are completely up to you. But I'm going to take those two strips and I'm going to leave about a hook gap beyond that tie down and I'm going to lay that in. I'm going to come over the hook all the way around and tighten that down right on top of that glue and get a few turns in there to anchor that down in place. And I want to make sure it's square up on top of the hook. You can even kind of pull it apart a little bit and tighten that thread down even a bit more. Now the strip is much longer than I need, so at this point I'll just cut it shorter just so I don't have to work around it while I tie. And now I'm going to put the legs in. And what I've got for the legs are fly enhancer legs. Um, these are gold, amber, black. And I'm, I'm going to put two strands on each side. So I'm going to start on my near side here and I'm going to catch these at about the center of their length right in the seam between the two different colors of foam about like so 
And then I'm going to take two more strands, I'm going to do the same thing on the far side. And you can see I'll just sort of lay these on the high side and let the thread drag them down in position. You don't need a ton of wraps on, on any of this because we're going to be building them up. So don't get carried away with the number of thread wraps. So we've got legs on, on either side now. Now the wing, um, this is a point of contention for me. This is the thing that's always bothered me. There's a lot of different materials that are used for chubby wings, uh, but too many of them um, are just not very buoyant. Um, this material is very buoyant. What this is is polypropylene macrame yarn. And what I've done here is I've taken several colors. I've got gray, brown, uh, gold, and I think tan um, that I've just brushed out and brushed together. Um, this yarn is, is very kinky. It uh, comes in a braid and I brush it out and mix the colors together. And what this does for me is it gives this yarn a lot of surface area. Um, and on a big size six like this, I'm gonna take a pretty good sized clump of this and I'm going to lay it right here up on top and I'm gonna come up between the legs and down on the far side and catch that with a couple of turns. So everything's tied in at that single spot. You can see that wing's fairly long. And then I'll take another little pinch of my dubbing and we're going to use this to cover the tie down as well as to help separate the legs. So again, that same emergence dubbing and I want a fairly thin long strand here. And what I'll do is I'm going to hold this wing back along with the the back sets of legs. Make sure I've got them. And I'm going to wrap this dubbing in that joint. And you'll see as I start to build some of that up, I can kind of come back over the base of the wing and that'll hold it back in place. And as I've got that positioned, well, I've got a little extra dubbing here, I can just start to sneak in front, no big deal there. And now I'm going to dub the rest of the body. Now on these bigger flies, I like to use direct dubbing. And so rather than twist this onto the hook, or onto the thread. What I'm going to do is take this dubbing and loosen it up a bit. And just start to twist it down on. Just at a single corner. And then I'll hold the, the legs and the foam back out of the way. And I'm just going to start wrapping. And it really doesn't matter if I use up that bare thread coming forward or not. But I want to come all the way up to the hook eye. And you can see as I twist this dubbing around the hook, it twists around the thread and I'm just letting it feed out of my fingers. I use this a lot for leeches and um, on a lot of streamer patterns, just to make a nice shaggy body. So I'm going to work down and all the way back up. And as you approach the end, I'll just twist those last few wraps down a bit. And I'm going to stop short of the hook eye with another little thread band, just like we did at the back. Now, for the same reason, I'm going to put another little shot of Zappa Gap in there. Right on top of that dubbing. I'm going to pull this foam forward, center it up on the hook, tighten that turn down. And you can see how I tighten that thread. It's just a nice steady pull. Um, it won't cut through the through the foam if you don't give it a solid straight jerk. And then we'll repeat that process that we did at the back. I'm going to set a set of legs in here on the near side. A couple turns. Set of legs on the far side for a couple turns. And then another clump of yarn. And again I'll take this clump of yarn and set it right at the center of its length, even with the thread. Catch it with a couple, and you can even pinch that down. And then we'll do that same thin strand of dubbing to kind of pinch that back in place. This is really an easy fly. It's not, there's nothing complicated about it. Um, but it's such an opportunity to make something better out of something that uh, has been around and, and, you know, frankly has been seen a lot. Um, my idea on this is just to sort of dress this fly up a little bit, enhance it as it were, and uh, so far, in you know, all my fishing, it's it has made a difference. Just something a little different. So I'm going to pull those those legs and that yarn back, 
and build that little collar in between just to force that wing back a bit. And I'll take the remaining dubbing and just work my way up to the hook eye. Get a few turns up here around the hook eye just for a small thread head. And I can sneak my whip finisher under there without catching the legs and put a whip finish in. And then I'll trim that thread out. And now one thing that I'll do here before I get too far along, I'll stand this wing up again. I like to put a little bit of zappa gap in between these sections of foam just to glue these together. The reason I don't glue them together first is because you see the arch of the body. Um, if you glue the foam together first, it doesn't want to want to hump like that in the middle. It gives us a little bit more of the, of the air cells in the foam, makes the fly float a little bit better. So I'm going to lift this back end up and just coat the top of that tan with some zap. And while I'm in there, I'll do the same thing to the front. And again, be careful not to get it on the, on the legs. And then I'll just pinch those two ends together for a second. Um, foam and Zappa Gap work wonderfully together. They really work nicely. And then I'll knock this front, front end down to just about the same length as the back end. I like it to stand up a little bit. Oh, I didn't get my glue in there well enough. Put another little shot in there. My biggest thing working with Zappa Gap is trying to figure out ways not to get it on your fingers, so I try to be as light with it as I can. I think we're sticking here. Get our back end stuck. So we'll let that dry for a second. There we go. Coming up. In the meantime here, I'll trim this wing. Um, a couple different schools of thought. I usually go about a shank length long. I'll just pull the wing straight up and cut straight across. So I've got a big bushy wing on the top of the fly that gives us lots of surface area. We've got those big dangly legs. And one thing that glue just doesn't want to grab right there. One thing I do like to do is just knock the corners off the, the foam body just to smooth things out a little bit. You know, we went to all this trouble, we might as well make it nice. And we'll do that same thing on the front end. My glue will ever grab. And again, just be careful not to, to nick the legs off. There, I think our glue is grabbed. And I'm just going to come in from the sides and just trim the legs to all the same length. They're about, I'm going to say they're just short of a shank length long. Um, you can leave them a little longer. Um, but I will warn you, if you leave them too long, um, they tend to foul around the hook bend. And then one last final step. I'm going to come in with a wire dubbing brush and just pick that body out along the bottom. You can use a piece of Velcro for this also but I want that body to be shaggy. Um, and you can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at from the bottom as we've got a dubbed body, but with that, that big foam life preserver built up over the top. And that is our enhanced chubby Chernobyl. Um, really, really a cool fly. I actually uh, didn't like this fly at all when it first came out. And as I've fished it more and more over the years, um, it's really become something something of a go-to for me. Um, it's durable. It's quick and easy to tie. I don't mind when I lose them. Um, you know, occasionally I do throw a cast into the bushes, and it's not the end of the world when that happens with this because it only takes a couple minutes to, to tie a new one. Um, but that is the finished enhanced chubby. Um, give it a try. See what you think. Um, I'm sure it'll work for you. You can tie them in big sizes like this. This will hang, um, you know, several tungsten beads. I'll use a two bit stone and a two bit hooker under, under this as a double dropper. Um, no problem. It'll float big stuff like that. No problem. Um, if you're on a little bit smaller water, you can, uh, tie the, uh, micro chubbies in much smaller sizes. And for that, I've been using this hook is a, uh, an Umqua XT050, I think is what the number is, 050. Um, and this is the stubby chubby hook. It's got a, uh, a retainer bend, so it's got kind of a sharp bend. It is a barbed hook. Um, it's sticky sharp, but it's got an extra wide gap. This fly's obviously got a single set of legs and it's tied with two millimeter foam, but otherwise the, the parts are, are the same as what I just tied. Uh, but you can see that large hook gap um, on a much smaller scale. Um, so if you do need to size down, that XT050 is the hook to do that on. Um, so give them a try, see what you think. Let me know how it works for you. 
Thanks for watching. As always, I'll be back next month. Take care.